very first question. And I think this question comes from a young child in the audience. And it was this. Was there another Adam? I thought that was an interesting question. Now all of us know who Adam is, right? Adam was the first man. The Bible tells us that he was created on day 6 in Genesis 1, verse 27. We're not told much about the name of Adam. In fact, we're not told what his name means. We're not told when God gave him the name. We're just told that his name was Adam in Genesis 2, 19 when he begins to name the animals. There's an inter interesting description of Adam in Luke chapter 3, verse 38. The text reads as follows, Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, now listen to this, which was the son of God. Isn't that an interesting description of Adam? Referred to in that text as the son of God. And such he was, wasn't he? We know that Adam is the one who ate of the forbidden fruit in Genesis 3 verse 6. And because of his transgressions, there were numerous consequences that came upon mankind. Man was cursed, the ground was cursed, and man now had to work by the sweat of his brow. Woman would now have much pain in childbearing. Adam and Eve were cast out of that beautiful Garden of Eden and angelic beings were placed there at the entrance of that garden so that they no longer had access to the tree of life. At this particular point in time, the curse of death came upon all men and sin now entered into the world. Horrible consequences because of one man's transgressions. His life ends in Genesis 5, verse 5. The text says, And all the days of Adam were 930 years, and he died. Adam is only mentioned three more times in the Old Testament after his death. We turn to the New Testament and we find that there are six different mentions of Adam in the New Testament. But there is a very interesting passage of Scripture that refers to a second Adam in the New Testament. Thus the question, was there another Adam? He's mentioned... 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. And so it is written, The first Adam was made a living soul. Notice this one. The last Adam a quickening spirit. Notice there is a first Adam and there is a last Adam. Two Adams mentioned in the pages of God's Word. Now, when we read that text, we begin to ask some questions, and one of them is this. Who in the world is this second Adam? He doesn't name him here, does he? He just says he's the last Adam, and he was made a quickening spirit. Who is this? Well, Paul, just two verses later, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 47, tells us exactly who this second Adam is. He says this, The first man was of the earth, earthy. Now listen to this. The last man was the Lord from heaven. My friends, the second Adam is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That's interesting, isn't it? He specifically says... That that last man is who? The Lord from heaven. Now we might ask the question, why does Paul make such a comparison between Adam and the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, the reason for it is, is because Adam is a type 
of Jesus Christ. There are several ways in which these two men are alike and there are several ways in which these two men are extremely different from one another. Let's begin and look at the comparisons between the two. First comparison. They are both sons of God in unique ways, aren't they? We just read... Luke 3.38, Jesus or Adam is the Son of God. And all of us know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Both of them sons of God through miraculous means. Secondly, both of these men were made in the image and likeness of the Almighty God. The Bible says that in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And God did exactly that. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the image of the holy God in Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3. They are the image of God. Notice thirdly, both of them were invested with power and dominion, weren't they? Adam was given dominion over the totality of the earth, over the totality of the creation that God placed within His hands. And Jesus said, All power hath been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, verse 18. Both of these individuals brought man something. Now, when we look at the something that was brought, there is a big difference between the two. But both of them brought mankind something. We'll look at the contrast in a minute. And notice this. Both of these men had unique brides. Isn't that true? Eve, a woman who was created from the rib of man, Our Lord Jesus Christ has a very unique bride. That bride being the church of Jesus Christ. So there are five ways in which Adam and Jesus are alike. We could spend a whole lesson talking just about the comparisons between the two men. But there are some contrasts between them as well. Notice one of them. Adam was created of the earth. Jesus, on the other hand, was a spirit being, was He not? He had always existed. He didn't have to be created per se. Oh yes, a body was prepared for Him, but He had always existed. Notice secondly, Adam was a disobedient son of God. Jesus, on the other hand, was an obedient son of God. It was through Adam that sin entered into the world. It was through Jesus that grace was brought to mankind. It was through Adam that death came upon mankind and it was through Jesus Christ that all men could now have the possibility of eternal life. Adam brought condemnation upon the world. And my friends, it was Jesus who brought justification to all humanity. I could spend another entire lesson talking just about those five contrasts between these two atoms. Now what's always amazing to me is when individuals begin to really study the Scripture, to look at the Scripture, some of the things that they can find out and some of the things they can think about these contrasts and comparisons. And so I have a few more details for you. Listen to this first one. In the Garden of Eden, Adam turned from God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus turned to God. Pretty sharp, isn't it? How about this one? Adam was naked and ashamed, was he not? And hid himself in the garden. But Jesus, although naked, He bore our shame. Thirdly, Adam's sin brought thorns to the world. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, God said. 
The second Adam bore a crown of thorns upon his head during his trial and throughout his crucifixion. Number four, Adam substituted self for God, did he not? Rather than obeying God, I'll do whatever I want to do. Man was placed over and beyond God. But when Jesus came into the world, notice what He did. He substituted God for man, didn't He? He put Himself in man's stead. Here's a fifth one. Adam sinned at a tree. Adam, or Jesus bore our sins upon a tree. And then lastly, Adam died as a sinner. And Jesus died for sinners. Folks, those are some beautiful contrasts between the first Adam and the second Adam. And we could spend an entire month of sermons talking about how Adam is the type of Jesus or how Jesus is the antitype of the first man. But that's enough of that question.